Today, we're smoking some whiskey. My name's Angelo, and if you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. If you've been here before, I'm sorry I'm not better at it. So today, we're gonna to be smoking some whiskey and some cognac. And if you have a wife and kids, this is the recipe for you, I promise. So this is very easy, very straightforward. You just need a few things that you might not already have. You do need a smoking tube. So I have a Kamado grill and we're gonna, we're gonna smoke this on that grill. Um, but I can't use charcoal or any other normal heat method because then the grill will get too hot. So we have what's called a smoking tube and it's really just a metal tube that allows air in it. It is loaded with pellets. I have gone with apple flavor pellets because I think that nice sweetness of the apple is gonna complement um, my liquor pretty well. Um, and you also need a torch. So I don't light my fires with a torch when I cook. I usually use just little fire starters and then like a, uh, you know, one of those long lighters. Um, you do need a torch because we're gonna have to hold it over these uh, pellets until they ignite. And that's gonna take a little while. So if you do need a torch, this was like 15 bucks. I'll put a link in the description below. So this process is very simple. It doesn't matter what grill you have or what you're using. Essentially, all we're gonna do is light these pellets on fire. We'll let them really catch and start to burn. Then we'll blow out that fire. And then that will continue down the tube, putting out really nice, smoke. Our booze is going to go in these tin foil containers. And we're just going to rest them in the grill and we're going to let that smoke go into the alcohol and let the alcohol absorb that smoke. Once we're done with that, we're going to use these funnels and put that booze right back in the bottle. This is very straightforward. It's very easy. The only thing we have to do is make sure that we set up the grill properly, make sure we have a good enough smoking tube, and then make sure that this is properly lit. If you don't let it light long enough and you just blow it out, then it's gonna die and you're not gonna get what you want. So, let's go outside. I'll show you how my Kamado is set up. I'll show you how we set this up and then we'll get this process going. Okay, you're looking at the inside of my Kamado. So I've taken out the heat deflectors, I've taken out the accessory rack, and we're just looking at the bottom. Yours may not look exactly like this. So I have a kick ash basket. I use this because it allows for better airflow. It's much easier to clean. It saves charcoal a lot better. So I do love this basket. If you have a classic one or a classic two and did not replace your basket, you have a big cast iron plate right here. This cast iron plate is usually sitting right here. Okay, so I've taken this out because I'm using the basket and my basket just sits right here. I've also taken out my ash tray and the ash removal system because I just find it's easier to clean without it. So the inside of your Kamado may look a little different than mine. But at the end of the day, we have a nice clean inside. I don't have any charcoal, I've cleaned this out. All I'm gonna do is put my smoke tube right here and we're gonna go ahead and light it. So that fire caught. So we're gonna let this fire burn. We're gonna leave that flame there and we're gonna leave this for 10 minutes. If we blow this out too soon, we're not gonna get the smoke that we want. So we're gonna let this burn for 10 full minutes and then we're gonna come back, we're gonna blow it out and we're gonna lay this tube on its side. And then that's where we're gonna add our heat deflectors and our accessory rack and everything else. So right now, let's just let this sit for 10 minutes. We'll let this burn and then we'll come back in a bit and blow it out. So as our smoke tube catches and it really starts to burn down, let's just talk about what we're gonna do real quick. I am using proper 12 whiskey and I am using Cavassier Cognac. I wanna use those because I personally think some nice added apple smoke really enhances those flavors. I, I enjoy the sweetness of an apple smoke in those two you know, liquors. I also have you know a double barrel Johnny Walker and some stuff like that. I don't like to smoke whiskey that has already been smoked. I don't wanna add you know, a different smoke to what is already there. I like to smoke whiskeys that necessarily, you know, haven't necessarily been smoked. So that's what I'm using. Obviously this is personal preference. You can add this smoke flavor to any alcohol you want. You can use any pellets you want. I like apple, I like to add the sweetness to the, you know, the hardiness of a cold weather whiskey, if you will. Um, it is cold outside, which is helpful. This is whiskey 
So even if the grill got hot, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. So if we were smoking cheese or bacon, you wanna be careful of the temperature. So I live in Texas, it gets very hot. I don't even need a fire in that grill sometimes for it to get a well over 100 degrees. So obviously I couldn't be smoking cheese in August in Texas. So weather does help and it plays a role in this for you. So we're gonna go ahead, once this tube is caught, we're gonna blow it out. We're gonna add our heat deflectors, we'll add our liquor, and then we'll let this smoke. If you wanna add even more smoke, you can stir that alcohol up, right? The more you stir it, the more smoke that'll get in there and the more smoke it will absorb. I, again, it's all personal preference. If this is your first time and you don't exactly know the window of time that you want, I'm gonna be doing one hour with this apple smoke and I think that adds enough smoke that I can taste it and enjoy it, but not so much that it just tastes like I'm drinking smoke water. So I would recommend 45 minutes if this is your first time and then go from there. You can always put it back on. What you can also do is separate your bottle into three or four different pans and add them for different periods of time to really know, you know, get find that sweet spot that you enjoy. And once you do it once and you know what you like, then you're all set. You can just follow that process going forward. So that's what I've done in the past and that's why I know one hour on here with Apple is what I like to do. So I think that tube is all set. It's been about 10 minutes. So we're gonna blow it out, lay it down and get our grill set up for the rest of this. Okay, so we've got some really nice smoke coming out of here. I've already blown out that flame, but I just wanna make sure there isn't a flame and it's not actively, you know, we want it to be passively burning. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this on its side. I'm gonna lay it down in here just like this and we'll let that smoke continue to work its way through and rise up. We do want this to smoke evenly, so I'm gonna add my heat deflectors with my accessory rack. We'll put this back in. I'm just gonna put my heat deflectors right here in the middle. We do want some nice solid airflow because we do need to continue the smoking process. And now we're gonna add our grates. and we're gonna add our pans. So I have a classic too. I don't necessarily have unlimited space. If you have an accessory rack, which I do, we can put that in, but you know, we're not talking about a ton of liquid here, so I'm just gonna do this like this. So we're just gonna pour our booze in. Be sure to save those bottles because again we're going to put these through funnels back in those bottles so now we just wait it's very simple it's very straightforward we just wait make sure that our smoke is continuing to grow which it is here so now what we do is we're just going to close this lid and wait so i like to go an hour like i said the longer you go the more smoke you're going to get uh, if i stir this and i mix it up it's going to absorb even more smoke that way so i'm just going to leave these i know that i like these to sit here for one hour unstirred. So I'm just gonna close this lid and make sure that these vents are wide open. We want nice solid airflow. So I got my top wide open and we've got our bottom wide open. We want nice solid airflow because we wanna continue to feed that, that tiny little fire inside of the smoke tube. So we're gonna come back in one hour and then we'll go ahead and add it back to the bottles. So you can see here, we still have a ton of smoke coming out of here, but it's been an hour, so we're done. This is a 12 inch smoke tube that we used. So that's gonna get us five or six hours of consistent smoke like this. So we only need one. So I didn't need to fill it up all the way with the pellets, but I did anyway. And really what we're gonna do now is open this up and then put this booze back in its bottles. So, I find the best to use a funnel. Obviously, there's no way you're gonna pour it in there without a funnel. You can put this in a pitcher first or pour it in something that's a little easier to control than a bent up <laughs> tin foil container. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this directly in the bottle and pour it in. This was our Cavassier. This was our um, proper 12. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour it in and then we're done. This was an easy, straightforward way to really enhance some you know, whiskey or, or liquor that you have lying around. Um, again, I used proper 12 Irish whiskey and I used a bottle of Cavarcier. 
they don't have heavy smoke flavor, so I like to add that flavor when I do this. You can use any booze that you want. It's a very easy, straightforward process. You can do this with cheese. You can cold smoke bacon. There's a million options out there. I'm doing booze because the holidays are coming and nothing like a nice, cold, smoky whiskey on the rocks. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you wanna see more like this, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, just do it down below and I'm always happy to respond.